All right, so one question left here in on the traditional test. This is the longer question. So what we have is two production lines and one large facility that are making tortillas. Neither production line is working like it should be. The uh, true diameter of all of the tortillas is supposed to be 6.0 inches. At least we want the, the mean for all the tortillas to be 6.0 inches. We realize there's going to be some variability because nothing's perfect, right? So in this case it's kind of interesting because neither line is working but the mean uh, of all of them is 6.0 because production line A is coming up with a mean of 5.9 and production line B is coming up with a mean of 6.1 and if we weighted each one of those and combine the variables, right, uh, 0.5 weight for each one, we would get 6.0. Okay, so first there's a method where we're going to sample uh, 200 tortillas from all of the 200,000 tortillas, right? So we're just going to sample any 200 of these 200,000 tortillas produced in a given day. Um, maybe it will turn out that about 100 of them are from line A and about 100 of them are from line B. And then that should average out to be a 6.0, what we would think, plus or minus a little bit, right? Method 2, though, we're only selecting one of the two production lines. So flip a coin, heads we do line A, tails we do line B. All right, so take a random sample of 200 tortillas from the 100,000 in that line. Well, we know that that's probably going to not come out to be 6.0. It could, right? Like if you look at production line A, there is a little area between 6.0 and above, so 6.0 or higher is possible. But more likely you're going to be closer to 5.9. The other one's going to tend to be closer to 6.1 if we get tails, let's say, and do production line B. Okay, so uh, for A, we need to say method 2 will not be working like we would like it to. It we'll get a bias because like bias is when on the average we tend to miss the two true population uh, mean in this case. So um, we're off target. We tend to be off target, right? So it depends which production line is selected, A or B, we're either going to underestimate or overestimate the true population mean. So we're going to tend to miss the bullseye what the real answer is by using this method. We're going to tend to get a mean of 5.9 or a mean of 6.1 plus or minus some value, right? Um, which distribution is represented here, right? So this is got to be method one because um, if we're using method one then uh, 100,000 tortillas are like over on this half of the distribution and 100,000 on this half, right? These coming from line A and these coming from line B. If we were using uh, method two, we wouldn't have a bi we wouldn't have bimodal data. We would have just seen one peak, right? So our sample would look something like the population A or like the population B, one or the other, but not both. And we're seeing elements of both in our sample, uh, so we can see both populations are represented here. All right. When there's two peaks, it's bimodal. That's the word. All right, C. 
which of the two methods would have less variability? Well, actually, method one shows a lot of spread, right? A lot of variability right here, right? And method two would only be like half of, well, uh, roughly half. Okay, there's a little overlap, so I shouldn't say exactly half. Okay, so it only it would only have like a curve representing one population or the other. It would be less spread out. So which one has less variability? I said method two would have less variability because the 200 tortillas will likely range in diameter f uh, from up to three standard deviations below 5.9 or three standard deviations above 6.1 if method one is used. Like So I, what I've seen is like this, this is really spread. Uh, you know, 5.9 is the center most of the data is within three standard deviations, right? And then most of the data over here is within three standard deviations. So there would be a lot of standard deviations of spread is what I was explaining. You don't have to explain it like that. But this is way more spread out. But uh, uh, the other method is going to... Uh, I think it got cut off here from my camera work here, but method T would be distributed by only a single peak. And of course on the real test you had a lot more room to uh, to write a struggling fitting things in here. Alright, part D. Uh, what would happen here if we did uh, samples of size 200 using method 1? Alright, method 1, sample size of 200. We already know method 1 has a population distribution of 0.11. But the standard deviation of the sample, okay, means like the, the sample standard deviation is different than the population standard deviation because uh, this is sort of what the population standard deviation would look like. Right. But if we were to now average out all of these and put one dot to represent the mean of all of those and then do that again and then do that again and then do that again, well, the average of this whole plot here has got to be right around 6, right? It might be maybe a little more, it might be a little less, depending on which 200 tortillas we get. Okay. So method one, which this is sort of a snapshot of the distribution of method one, right? We would the 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 mean of all the means is still 6.0, right? The the mean of all the sample means is the population mean, right? Mu sub x is the same as mu sub x bar, and the sample standard deviation, though, is reduced. Okay, so this is all spread out with a standard deviation about 0.11. But we would get this normal curve, pretty skinny, centered around 6. Right? So you have to divide by the square root of 200. That is on the formula sheet for a sample mean. Divide by the square root of n to get the standard deviation of the sample mean, all right? So very small, so it would actually uh, be a normal curve, really skinny with a center at six inches. All right, so part E, which of the two methods will result in less variability? Um, so I was just explaining how skinny the normal curve would be, right? The approximately normal curve would have this very small standard deviation. Um, and uh, that method would have less variability uh, in the distribution of 365 uh, sample means. So picture 365 dots. 
right? Method one would have loss variability as all the sampling means would fall near 6.0. What would happen with the other method? Well, some of the dots would be, a lot of the dots would be congregated around 5.9, and then uh, about half the dots would be around 6.1. So there would be variability, so there might be a tight curve here and a tight curve here, but then if you look at the picture as a whole, you had a whole bunch of dots here and a whole bunch of dots here, so they're spread out over the whole graph. All right, that would definitely be more variability, right? So half the sample means would be near 5.9 and half near 6.1, right? And then for part F, so based on that answer, we can trick the uh, government ex inspectors, right? And we're going to go with the one that puts all the dots close to 6.0. So we definitely want to go with method 1, even though neither assembly line is working like it's supposed to, at least on average, our customers can be happy that the true mean from the entire factory is 6.0. All right, the truth is half the customers are going to be really happy and half are going to go just a little bit hungry. And, um, ooh, it is almost lunchtime up here at Century on the Hill. I am getting a little bit hungry.